now in its ninth year. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight on GabNet. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Larry Bubbles Brown, who has allergies today. Allergies year-round now, apparently. Is that is that the thing? They're year-round? Yeah, I guess. God, it's clogged up and uh, tired and it's crappy. Oh, boy. Well, your your life is miserable. Okay. Yes, and getting more miserable with age. Is, uh, oh, d- d- hey, how old are you now? You're like 67, 68, somewhere around in there. Oh, I, I've hit the I hit the seven. Did seven you hit the series, seven? Oh, so. you. I'm still like 14 years older than you. Wait till you get to yeah. be my age if you make it. You know, uh, which I'm well, no doubt. Someone, someone told me when they hit the, when they hit their seventies, they noticed that everything really slowed down. Uh, I noticed it at 80. Up until 80, I seemed to be okay. Are you there? Oh, boy. We lost him. What do you know? We lost him. Well, I will just call him again. And he's probably still on the line. Let's see. I have to do it a couple of times until he realizes he's he's lost me. Okay. Boy, this Skype just uh, has done this a lot recently. You know, uh, and we're so talk- you noticed it at eighty. Yeah, I noticed it at uh, at eighty. I think prior to that, I did. not I'll tell you when I first no. Actually, I noticed it. I think after my prostate operation, I, I, there was a decline, and I think there was a decline from the surgery. I think it caused a little bit of it. You know, so uh, uh, but you know, it's things like memory. I'm lightheaded all the time. Uh, my sense of balance is off. I mean, it's th- those kind of things. Uh, and I suppose I shouldn't complain because I'm about to make 84. So, you know, um, I, it, spending that much time of my life not being a digestible for worms, uh, <laughs> you know. That's why we we have to decide now how we're going to be disposed of, which I've been thinking about. I don't want to be buried. Well, my wife wants to cremate me. and That seems to be the way to go. <clears throat> well, see, I wonder how much of your remains you need after death. In other words, let's say there is that wonderful place you go to. Well, if you go to it without your kidneys or something, you know, come on. <laughs> you know, so I don't know. I mean, I have no idea. But I'm saving up for the afterlife, okay? But anyway, she wants to she wants to cremate me. And um, that's why I'm hoping I live longer than her. Then I can decide what happens to me. By the way, very you want an interesting little fact that I did, they just found I just found out by watching the Daily Show, and I did not know this. If you're British and you die without a will, where do you think your money goes? Probably to the state. Not really, but you're close. It goes to the king. Wow. Yes. Prince uh, King Charles. That, that's his Ooh. name now. King Charles gets all your money. Well, that, that family is <laughs> amazingly wealthy. <laughs> yeah. They don't need it. Well, all these people are dying and not making wills. That's how they're rich. But can intestate. You... I think it's called dying intestate when you have no will. Yes. That's what it's called. But, you know, here, I, I, what happens to it? What happens here? I think it's um, I think it's given to the state, isn't it? Here it goes. Uh, there's there's a uh, they have a list of uh, they go by family members. 
and then if they run out of that, then it goes to the state. Really? In other words, it can go to the closest family members? It would go to the closest family member, yeah. Okay. So if you had a sister or a brother, it would go to them. Because I imagine a lot of people die without wills. I mean... I'm sure most people well, do. Especially younger people. I mean, you know. I mean, do you have a will? No. See? Good example. Yeah. You don't have a will. Where are those millions going to go after you <laughs> die? I wish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, but where 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 do the millions go? Uh, where would your where would your stuff go? You know, or, go or, to my sister. Yeah, but how do you know that? See, if you don't have a will, see, if you make a will, it's pretty definite who gets stuff. I mean, it maybe goes into probate and does a lot of things like that. But in the end, uh, you have you said I want to give you know ten thousand dollars to my sister or whatever. Mm-hmm. That that's written in stone pretty much. Just it takes a time to get it. I like I I got willed. Uh, a lot of money by someone recently, and uh, it it's taking forever. It's been you know, it's been close to oh, ten months since the death of that person. Wow! You know, I heard that too. Yeah, that grinds forever. Yeah, I, you know, I'd like to get it before I drop dead. You know, but yeah. and be able to have use it and have fun. But uh, but the point is that if you don't have a will, it just it just you know, she may not get anything. So, uh, lawyers might get it all. You know, so right. So it's best. What you can do is, uh, if you don't have a lot of property, you've got uh, bank accounts and stuff. You could just make her a beneficiary. Either that, or or uh, signed on to the account. Yeah. You know, Joint but account. but but uh, you know, it's not bad to have a will made, and you can get them made pretty cheaply. In fact, Marjorie sent away and had ours made. Which is fine. They they they're legal and they're binding, but once once we get a little bit of money, I'm going to get a lawyer and, and make up a really proper one. You know, that's so, a good idea. Yeah, these are things, folks, that we all think about at this age. <laughs> you know. Well, the fun thing to do at our age is look at uh, look at famous people who we've outlived. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, I've, I've outlived. Uh, who have I outlived? Who recently who died? Somebody big died, and I can't remember who it was. But anyway, I, you know, I, I, but I, I, it, I don't like outliving those people. Isn't fun either because every day you wake up, another person's died that's you know younger than you, and mm-hmm. that you spent your whole life like admiring or you know being a fan of, and they're now dead. That's it. And then you begin. I'm looking at people have a short life, like Steve McQueen died at 50. Yeah, yeah, he died. Elvis at, 42. El, yeah, Elvis was a drug thing, right? Basically, it looked like he'd had a few uh, pharmaceuticals. Yeah. And 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 the place you don't want to be found is on the toilet. No. You know, like name famous people who have died on the toilet. Elvis. And how about Lenny Bruce? Lenny was found on the uh, toilet. Or maybe... There I mean, was a sto- what? story about EMTs here, and they say the majority of people that are found dead in apartments are on toilets because they die, uh, they get an aneurysm straining. Well, then I better, not, people. I better not strain that much. Yeah, you gotta better well, get that fiber. What did, what did he die of, taking a shit? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you'd hate that to be your obituary in the paper. Uh, like, uh, what did uh, Alex Bennett died today of taking a dump? Well, oh boy, you know, what a way to go. So anyway, speaking of deaths, your friend Dana Carvey is somebody who you, employs you a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. And Dana, his son just died. His third. Yeah, it was horrible. I don't have uh, any information at all. I've Got a couple of texts from Dana, and that was it. But uh, yeah, it's horrible. It's just terrible. You I know. know. I don't but, know how you get a well. You know, over something like that. I've never been a parent, neither of you. But I think we can both be 
look at the problem that it, uh, that exists when your child dies because that's the last thing you expect. That's a person you think is going to live after you. Exactly. And then they yeah, they die. And what was it? Was it drugs? It was something like that. I thought some. I haven't. Uh, I thought the paper said it was an accidental overdose. I thought that was what the headline said. Yeah, yeah. It just uh, you know it, it's terrible. I've, and I've so felt for him. You know. Um, so if you talk to him, give him my my regrets. Oh, definitely. Yeah. You know, I just kind of feel like. Uh, when somebody dies, I kind of like to leave people alone and not talk to them for a while. So. Well, is it also because you feel uncomfortable doing it? I wouldn't feel uncomfortable doing it, but I just think when I've had deaths in the family or something, I just don't want to talk. I don't want to talk to anybody about it. So, well, that's why when somebody dies or in a situation like that, and I have to write them or tell them something, I just say, uh, "I heard about it. I'm so sorry," and uh, you know, and then after that, just leave them alone for a while. Yeah, because I know that when my father died, what I was sick of were people who would come up to me and go, "I'm so sorry for your loss." Now, when they say, "Yeah, that, but it's like you're reliving it again." Uh, well, you go, you know, couldn't they come up with something slightly better? You know, my favorite is, "Well, I never liked him anyway." <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That was that was a, that Penn Jillette taught me that he said when somebody comes up to you and says I just broke up with my girlfriend, always say I never liked her anyway. He said because nobody wants to hear you lost her. She was wonderful. <laughs> you know that's not what you want to hear. And when yeah. somebody and somebody dies, everybody comes over to you saying the same thing, and and I would hold it against them except they mean it well, and they're. They're uncomfortable in the situation, so they're saying the only simple thing they can say that seems to be correct, and that's you know, um, I'm so sorry you get for your flooded loss. with cards, and then if that means you got to return them. It's just a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, you know, it it's uh, it, it it's, it, but we're all very uncomfortable in those kind of situations. You know, it's not something that we. That we feel good about, you know. And it's the most help, helpless feeling in the world. There's nothing you can do. I don't know what you can say. It's just horrible. You can just say, you know, I'm here for you is what I usually say, you know, if you need anything. And then yeah. I leave it at that. You know, that seems to say it all. Like, I, had a, you know, our friend Chuck Farnham. You remember Chuck Farnham? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I have Chuck Farnham does shows with me every now and then. And uh, his mother just died. And he wrote me about it. And I, I wrote him back and I said, you know, text. And I said, uh, uh, you know, I said, there's nothing I can really say here except that, you know, if you need me, I'm here to talk to you. Uh, and I said, I could tell you how, how, you know, my thoughts and prayers are going to you and so on. I said, but you're so sick of hearing that. You know? <laughs> right. Because I know my father died and then later my mother, same thing. People would come up to me. They all said identically the same thing. You know, either thoughts and prayers or uh, I'm sorry for your loss. And you say, I don't believe in thoughts and prayers. So. <laughs> I don't believe in thoughts and prayers. Well, the one I, I always hate is when somebody's been in the military, for whatever reason, thank you for your service. Now, no. I was in the Navy, okay? I was in the Navy for two years. I was in the Navy when the Vietnam War broke out, okay? So I'm a Vietnam vet, technically, all right? Do you think anybody ever says on Veterans Day, thank you for your service? No, and they shouldn't because I did it all in Hollywood, you know? But but still, yeah. uh, You're in Hollywood. <laughs> yeah, thank you for your service. Yeah, well, hey, enemy planes never got past Santa Monica Boulevard, and I consider my job done. Okay. You could say you could say I didn't have a choice. <laughs> I actually had a choice. I could have not joined the uh, Navy and been drafted into the Army. So oh. I really 
You know, it, it was kind of like, do you ever remember the movie um, uh, Duck Soup with the Marx Brothers? Yeah. And yeah. Harpo is walking around with a sandwich sign on his back and front that re- reads, join the Navy and see the Army at work. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> you know. And that's, I took that to heart, so I joined the Navy. Also, everybody told me the food in the Navy was the best food of any military service. So I figured, you know, what what are they going to feed me? A steak every night might be wonderful. So I joined the Navy. Boy, was that wrong. You know, <laughs> I, I can't remember ever getting a scrumptious meal in the Navy. I mean, it was okay, but, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, splendid. But um, the Army supposedly was the worst when it came to food. Yeah, so. it's, it had to be better than the Army from what I've heard. So. Yeah. so anyways, you get older, things happen. Like, do I sound like I'm okay? Do I, am I speaking properly and all of that? Yeah, and your voice sounds very strong. Because one of the things I know, when people get older, one of the things, you, their voice gets weird. They're kind of squeaky. and. Well, I think when I'm, when I'm doing this and I go into talk show mode, that I project more than I normally do the rest of the day around the house. Mm-hmm. I think if I were just talking to you in conversation at home, it'd be a little older. Uh, but uh, no, I, the reason I ask you is because lately I've had a hard time with the front of my mouth being a little on the puffy side or I feel like spittle is coming out, you know? And... Um, I, it, it's very important to me to be able to enunciate. You know, that's one of the things that you do as an announcer. And so you, you learn to use your mouth, and especially, uh, and I think it may have had something to do with my tooth being pulled or something, but you, you don't want your teeth to change too much because that's how you say your words. You know, your palate, you, your tongue goes against your teeth, and then says a word and if it's not just right and I've just felt the last oh I don't know month or a couple of months or so that it isn't just right so I was just so good yeah these are all the things folks that you have to look forward to I think of myself (laughs) as the Sacagawea of aging in that I'm uh, like the Lewis and Clark uh, uh, expedition going out there in that long plane of aging (laughs) <laughs> and I'm out front of everybody with my hand up to my my forehead, looking ahead to see what the terrain is like, and then reporting it back to you. Back to us, yes. Well, maybe you actually, you've actually lived twice two lives of uh, twice as long as Elvis. <laughs> You're right. You're yeah. right. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, you know what I thought. I was, I was thinking last night. You see, I mean, as you get older, you think these things. Like, I don't. I don't believe in. Do you believe in heaven? No. Do you believe in hell? No. Oh, okay. All right. If there is a hell, this is this, this is hell. it. This is it. Okay. But you know, I keep trying to think about. It. Well, soon I'm going to be gone. I don't know how soon. Could be ten years. Could be n- tomorrow. Right. Uh, at my age, it could be any second. Oops, see you later, bubs. Anyway, um, uh, but, you know, you, you think about these things, and then you wonder, there are a couple of things that come back to me, and I'm sure you've wondered this too, because you're the kind of guy that wonders about these sort of things. What's it all about? You know, uh, it was like, I think when Marlon Brando died, were, were his famous last words... Is that all there is? He said, uh, one day you'll be on your deathbed. You're going to look up and go, what the fuck was that all about? What, what the fuck was that all about? And and really, I begin to wonder, I mean, what is the reason for us being here, living these, well, in my case, 84 years, if it isn't preparing us for something more important? Because this isn't important. No, but I think humans always think there has to be a reason for something, and maybe there is no reason. Somebody referred to it once as doing time on planet Earth. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, 
But w- what's it all about? I mean, why have I, for instance, why have I, why have I, okay, in your case, why have you created this whole legacy of comedy? Okay? You've written a lot of jokes in your time, right? You know, yes, you've it, will, created, it will not be remembered. What happens to it? Why did, why did you do that? <laughs> we were, I think we're just here, we're just filling time. So we got to find something to do, either write jokes or do radio shows. Yeah, but do you really think that we were put on this earth just to do 80-some years, 90-some years, and then everything that you accomplished dies with you? I know. All your all your ability and so on and so forth. I mean, um, look at a guy like J. Robert Oppenheimer. All right, as an example, since the movie came out and everybody knows who he is, this man was brilliant. I mean, this, these are the kind of people that you and I, we probably look like ants to them, you know, because they're that intelligent. Right. And then they die. Well, that, where did that intelligence doesn't go anywhere. It just disappears. And all those years of gaining all that knowledge and, and ability and, and so on, all of a sudden, one day, it's nothing. I don't understand that. It makes no sense to me at all. So Go on with the wind. Yeah. So I mean, isn't there isn't there something that maybe we're being prepared for? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like you're hoping for something, but I don't think there is. I mean, you know, I mean, I imagine there are a lot of assholes in heaven because if. If there aren't, then what has this life prepared me for? <laughs> you know? Because there's nothing but like your, like your father said, you've been dead before. It was like all the time before you were born. Well, you know, uh, what was it like before we were born? You want to get frightened about something? Come on. I mean, you probably don't remember anything before, say, four or five years old, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this one kid, this three-year-old kid that was in uh, Gaza and kidnapped, and they returned the kid finally, and everybody breathed a sigh of relief, but everybody says, oh, this kid's going to be scarred for life, because both her parents got killed in front of her. And I'm going, if my parents were killed in front of me at three years old, I don't think I would remember it. Probably not. You know? Uh, the only thing is I would grow up without parents. I'd be different than all the other kids who do have parents. But I'm wondering how, how, how scarred she's going to be for the rest of her life because of that incident. And, and when I th- how far can you back can you remember? I think I can vaguely remember some maybe three and a half or four. Three and a half or four. Okay, I can't, yeah. I can't remember three. I think I can remember four because I remember drowning. That's my first. Yeah. That's my first memory back then. Was I, we were, my parents were at the Russian River. I went in to swim, and I couldn't swim. I didn't swim till I was in my teens, actually, or maybe maybe just before my teens. Uh, and uh, I I started drowning, and my parents my somebody took me out of the water, and. Uh, I uh, did this thing where they, uh, uh, you know, where they uh, resuscitated me or whatever. And all I remember were bubbles all over my face. Uh, that's how it felt. And that is the first memory in my life. So you almost drowned. Yeah, that I can remember. And I think that was at age four, something like that. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, I mean, I can't, um, you can't remember when you were two and when you were three. Um, you know, and you should be able to because you get a lot of warmth and affection, and your mother's holding you and things like that. And you should be able to remember that, but you don't. Maybe it'll be. Maybe you'll have a repress. Maybe that kid will have a repressed memory of what happened. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But uh, I, I don't know. You and I, uh, I would. I, if anybody would remember before he was like three years old, it would be Bubbles. And if Bubbles yeah. doesn't, nobody does. We should find out that there must be some savant that probably does remember when he was one. Or something. Well, there are people who remember their past lives. Shirley MacLaine. 
know. Yeah, a little uh, loopy there, huh? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, is it loopy to say I remember my past life? I mean, maybe, maybe you can. Who knows? I mean, I don't think there was a past life, but uh, hmm. you know, what the hell, you know? Yeah. Anyway, it was having this has been a good little conversation, even though it probably depressed the hell out of the rest of our audience. I know people don't like to talk about death, but uh, we do. It's a hobby. Well, we don't avoid reality. Yeah, that's right. Hey, Bubs, time's up. Time's up. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah, that's time's what they up. Say when you die. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the same thing they say when you die. Anyway, okay. want to thank you for your participation today. Sure, sure. Let's do it next week, okay? We will. Bye bye. Okay. Now, in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, everybody. How are you? It's uh, Friday. It's a Friday edition of our fine little program. And uh, if you want to join it, uh, just go. Best way to find out how to get here is to go over to gabnet.net. And then uh, there over on the side, it says click here if you want to join us on the uh, on Zoom. And uh, that will take you right there. I don't think you even have to have Zoom on your machine. I think that will take you to like a browser that will show it to you. But anyway, it's the easy way. And we encourage new listeners. It's just we're very um, uh, careful to weed out the bad ones by going to a picture of me while I'm letting the person on. And then if they look like they're, they're legitimate, we just let them on. And once you're legitimate, we'll remember you forever. You know, we'll cling to you like grim death, okay? So uh, anyway, that's our... Uh, that's our uh, uh, history here, what we got to do. Anyway, uh, let me set my mic right so that you can hear me okay. I always, I always had, never, you never see my microphone, do you? No. Mm -mm. Because I think that's unprofessional. Well, in television, you know, you, you maybe have a, a, a lavalier. I, and I do have lavaliers, but I don't use them. Um, and uh, uh, in, in television, you have lavaliers. And sometimes you may have a microphone in front of you, but most of the time, I just don't think it's very professional to have a mic showing. But everybody who does podcasts loves to show their microphones. Oh, look what I bought. See, I bought this big thing, and it's it's got a big windscreen in front of it and all of that. If you saw the mic I have here, it's very undramatic. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a beautiful, nice mic made by Elgato. But I, you know, it's a right below. Uh, if I if I put my hand where it is and then I raise my hand, you see, it's right. It's right, just right there. <laughs> okay, but I hide it. I just don't. Uh, I like the magic of, of video, you know, that you you don't just show what microphones you have, you know, and so it's it's some professional. But then again, most podcasters are. All right. Yeah, I'm an old fart. I think they're unprofessional. How can you say that? Alex? They're so good with their mystery programs and everything. Yeah, right. Anyway, uh, I think there's a couple. There are about three people waiting to come on. Who knows who else will come on tonight? But these three are three lovely people. Uh, there you have the lovely and oh, there is a fourth person coming on here. Uh, 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 oh, there's a fifth. Actually, there's a well with. Me, there'll be five. There's Alan. Okay, there's a, there's a, a Jeff. Hello, Jeff. Hello. Yeah. Can you speak? Are you, As, are you, is, yeah, I think he's got it okay. I don't... I got it, man. What'd you do? I know, because you were up early. You were on the line about a half hour ago, and I think your wife came over and made sure that everything was right, didn't she? Nope. Nope. Nope, you did it yourself. Son of a That's what happens when you buy new glasses. Bravo. Bravo. Uh, and uh, hello to Josh. How you doing, Josh? Good. How you doing? Yeah, yeah. He always comes on initially, looking like he's tired and eh, okay. How are you? Probably is tired. And then you say, "What do you think of the current blah 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 blah?" blah and then he gives us a big uh, lecture. You know, so he's he's a, he's an active guy, but you got to just you got to just poke him a little. You know, he's also employed. Unlike the rest of us. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Is Jeff employed? No. No. Uh, am I employed? Well, is this employment I have here? I think so. 
You think so? Yeah. But you know, well, I treat it like it's a job. A hobby, I mean, okay. I treat it like it's a job. I mean, it goes right on at the mm-hmm. at, at the exact minute that the show's supposed to start and <laughs> goes off relatively at the right time. And uh, you know, it's on every night when I say it's going to be on, unless I put up a thing that says it isn't. Uh, and uh, and then the show after me, of course, is very exciting because you don't know whether it's going to be on or not. So it you know. <laughs> There's a certain excitement there that that uh, it has. Um, <laughs> I won't tell you what the latest thing with Jack is that I've had to do with him for the last three nights, but uh, it, it it's hilarious. So <laughs> a- anyway, I well I think I think Jack because he's had a lot of uh, a lot of medical things lately. I think he has a hard time with s- comprehending certain things. Okay, because I know that after I had an operation, after I went through some medical stuff, for a couple of weeks after that, I was a little, you know, it was not myself. Okay, uh, and, huh? I said absolutely. Yeah. yeah so that happened. from my own experience. Yeah, that happens. Oh, you know, I know the panel is not up. I just yeah. realized that. Uh, <laughs> see, see, that's what happens when I get older. I, I the forgetting stuff I told you about. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is the citizens panel. So anyway, um, uh, so uh, you know, so I, you know, I, I don't, uh, I kind of help him with this stuff because I know it's kind of a little rough right now for him. A uh, little, but, huh? Well, don't be nicer than that. I am nice. You know, I mean, you're a regular caller of his, but be nice about it. You know, he. Uh, it's it, it's it's not easy, uh, and I, the thing is that I'm I'm kind of sympathetic because as I've gotten older, as they put me on certain medicines, I forget stuff, you know, stuff I shouldn't forget, things that are r- routine with me. Like the other day, I found out that I didn't post uh, the shows, so they would show up on iTunes, uh, and I just it's just one of those little things. I never doing everything. I looked uh, overlooked that. I don't think you can blame the medicine all the time, all seriousness. No, I, no, I as, think... As, as people get older, they get more we, forgetful. We, we, well, I get you more want me forgetful. to go online and tell you what it says the side effects of pregabalin are? <laughs> no, yeah. I, I know. I haven't taken it, but I know. Yeah, it's it's forget. <laughs> Am I right? It's forgetting. You forget stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It has memory issues. Anyhow. Yeah, yeah. Again, you're being very nice to the ill people here. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I'm old and forgetful, too. I turned 65 in less than 30 days. Oh, are you going to turn 65? Oh, you old. Yeah, you well, old. I hope so. Yeah. You old. I, today is my first day of Medicare. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. You're going to find, yeah. out, you're going to find out how much the government really thinks of you. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you really know, have. You're going to find well, out that the, the, the government only thinks you're worth 20%. And I, excuse me, for eighty percent. One of one of my prescriptions was fifty dollars, name brand, for a hundred day supply. Yesterday, today it's two hundred and fifty dollars. Wait a minute, hold on a second. Back off, back off. Before you got Medicare, I mean, do you officially have Medicare right now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. December first. Uh, all right. So. Uh, I don't understand why you were paying that much bef- uh, na- before, and now you're paying more now. What is that all about? I'm paying more under Medicare because it's a non-preferred name brand. Yeah. And and that's a level four or whatever they call it. You you didn't go out and get uh, what do you call it? Uh, Medicare Advantage. Medicare or- Advantage. Oh, yeah, I did. Oh, that's bad. Oh, oh, well, I live and learn. Because you don't have Medicare. No, I got Kaiser. Yeah. Which you, I've had most yeah. of my life, and I know how to manipulate them. So uh, Kaiser might actually be okay. I don't know about their Advantage plan. But the trouble with Advantage is that when you, what, what, the reason a lot of these companies want you to go with Advantage is that what happens is, and I get me, any, if anybody knows better, set me straight. What they do is they, uh, uh, the insurance company that you sign up with then takes over your Medicare account 
And Medicare yep. is no longer responsible for it. They are. They are kind of being Medicare. Absolutely. You're Only right. it's an it's an insurance company who isn't, believe it or not, as easy to deal with as the United States government in this matter. And that's why I tell people, get supplemental. It's going to cost you about 300 a month or more. But, yep. man, it, you walk away, you don't pay anything. You, you know? don't need supplemental with an Advantage plan. No, I said... Right. Take an advan a supplement. Yeah. You can't get a supplemental plan if you have advantage. Right. That's right. Yeah. So the advantage for me getting the advantage plan, sorry for the play on words, but is that I've been a Kaiser member for a long time and I got really good doctors and they're all on one campus or piece of property, including hospital emergency. Well, wait a minute. Let me let me ask you this question. Doesn't doesn't Kaiser accept Medicare? They do. Okay, so what you do is you take Medicare, and you have you to make to your Medicare, guy. and then you take supplemental. Oh, I see what you're saying. You see, yeah. as your as didn't your think about that, I'll it, have to look into that. As day. your secondary, you may not be able to change it till next year. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. Well, we're still in the uh, enrollment period until December seventh, so he could change it until December seventh. Oh yeah, you might be able to do that. I'll, I'll live with it for a year and see how. No, it works no. call call Kaiser and ask them. They might be able to help you through all of this. Okay. Yeah, uh, what okay. what do you, uh, you see? This is what our show has become, folks. <laughs> how, what kind of what kind of uh, med Medicare do you have? How about you, Charlie? Uh, what do you have? The supplemental or the advantage? Well, I have advantage because that's what the state of Texas pays for. Oh, I see. Because you have a, uh, you have a. Yes. a oh. uh, I worked for thirty years for the state of Texas, okay. and so they pay, they pay twenty percent, and then uh, uh, Medicare pays the other eighty percent. I I haven't paid a dime. Well, well wait a minute. But do you have do you have Medicare and then whatever the state of Texas gives you, or do you have have you been moved over to Advantage? I'm moved over to Advantage. I'm with uh, United. Healthcare Advantage, yeah. Medicare Advantage, but it's a special program with the state. Okay, and it so takes care of everything. If right? they start denying too many people, they'll switch. Do you have to pay for the prescription drugs? Um, the state covers my prescription drugs. Oh, right on. And so I don't know. I pay almost nothing for prescription well, today drugs. Today I went I through like five or ten dollar copay. Today Marjorie and I were changing our prescription service uh, because the insurance company we were with, which was a AARP, you know, uh, a prescription through, I think, United Health, if I'm not mistaken. Right. I could be wrong. They suddenly decided, they sent us a thing, they're upping the premium every, every month double what it was. Wow. It went from mm -hmm. like uh, in $40 to $80. Holy moly. And so we called our guy and we said, what are you going to do about this? And he looked at you know our drugs and blah, 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 and he put us on Cigna. He said, this is only going to cost you $20 a month. So he said, fine. You know, I said, is there all my stuff covered? They said, all your stuff's covered. I said, if all of a sudden I get some tragic thing happening to me and I ha have to get a very expensive drug, uh, will they cover it? He says, yeah, they'll cover it. So... I'll, I'll believe him, okay? But I never use my prescription drug service because what I do in the prescription drug service now, and in most of them, the uh, copay, or not the copay, the minimum, of the, you know, the deductible is yeah. uh, $500, okay? And uh, so I found that uh, the difference between buying all my drugs without my prescription service at Costco yep. is cheaper when you throw in that $500 deductible. So I just pay, you know, whatever they charge me. It's it's amazing. Three months supply of boner pills, uh, you know, is like uh, like $25, you know. See, I don't I don't have a I don't have a deductible yearly for medical or for drugs and I pay 5 to yeah. ten dollars, or depending on a thirty-day or a hundred-day supply for any generic drug and all the drugs I take. Are yeah, well, generic. generics generics are usually usually cheaper all right. the way and around. I but, only have one name brand drug, yeah. and it's this one that's 
you know, because it's not a preferred drug, they now prefer the generic that doesn't work for me. Well, the and generic. So I want the ca- I want the name brand that does work for in, me. In most cases, the generic should work for you. Gen- yeah, well, most generics work for me, but this one, these are yeah. eye drops for people oh, with oh, severely dry oh, eyes. Oh, 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 restasis. The restasis doesn't work with the shit. Oh, excuse me. Oh, okay. Doesn't work with the darn. But they have the another company came out with one that has double the chemical in it, and has nanoparticles. A couple of years ago. It's called Sequa, C E Q U A, and that works great. I don't need, I yeah. never need well, here, eye drops here's, anymore. Yeah. Here's the thing: a lot of times, if you, if if it's an exceptionally expensive drug, the begin with Costco won't cover it, won't take it. But I could go to my using my regular prescription service. But you might have to get what they call what an exception or a. a you have to get a. You have to. Uh, Kaiser's, yeah, Kaiser's going to cover this. It's like thirteen hundred dollars is the cheapest I could find it. Yeah, a ninety day supply, and it's going to cost me a two hundred dollar copay. So yeah, well I'll anyway, just, I'll just pay. How it. about you? How about you, Jeff? Do you have the advantage, or do you have the supplemental? Um, uh, both, I think. No, you can't have both. No, no? you can't have both. Sound like what you were just talking about that you had taken. Well, yeah, Medicare, Medicare, and then what's your supple? What's your secondary? AARP. AARP. Yeah, but what is it? Is it is it advantage or sup or or supplemental? Yeah, it's a gap. Yeah. It's a gap. Yeah, don't ask well, me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The gap is in the, in <clears throat> in prescription drugs. I'm talking about your regular medical. You know, it, I like if I go to the hospital. AARP is a Advantage program. Well, no, I had an AARP <laughs> supplemental. Oh. They, okay. have, they have both. Yeah, they, they have both. They sent, they sent me a hundred different join our supplemental thing from right. AARP. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, uh, Here's uh, my uh, medical. It's a, so we have Medicare and then AARP um, United Healthcare. So like I call it a gap policy. Ad- advantage or supplemental? It must be supplemental. Probably. I don't know. Yeah. You, 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 pay, you pay a nice fee for it every month, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, then that's supplemental. Supplemental. Yeah, but she the great thing the great thing it. about supplemental is you all go in the hospital, they'll take you know, take out your kidney or do whatever they gotta do and you walk out and you don't pay a penny. We what hardly pay for anything and Jeff's mm-hmm. in the doctors a lot. I, yeah, I don't I yeah. can't remember the last time you got a bill. Yeah, well they're losing money on him, but you know Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> All right guys, have fun. Okay. Hey, All right, Pam, take care. Good to see you again, <laughs> Pam. Uh, uh two very nice people, by the way. If you ever get a yeah. chance to have lunch with them, do it. You know. Yep. Yeah. Anytime. Uh, but anyway, um uh, hello Ray. Hi. You you you're you're on Medicare, right? Medical because my income's so low. Oh, really? A poor thing. I'm not old enough for Medicare yet. I don't think. Oh, okay. Actor. Just prematurely gray. I don't know. You know, I keep having these problems where I would like to be have a, so bad an income, okay, that I could get some of these little extra perks like Medicaid oh. instead of Medicare. Okay. You know. Let me tell you the best perk I ever had from this. So two days ago, I parked in one of those spots in the city where they tow your car after three o'clock. Yeah. And they towed my car. <laughs> I won't go into why I didn't. Why see was it. that an advantage for you? Okay. <laughs> so normally it's six hundred and eighty-five dollars to get your car out of impound and a hundred dollar ticket, seven hundred and eighty-five dollars. Oh. But because I'm on Medi-Cal, I showed her my insurance card, and it only cost me $100 to get my car out of impound, and the ticket was 100 So it cost me 200 bucks instead of 780 It cost you 200 bucks. 200 total. $100 ticket oh. and $100 out of impound oh, instead I, well, of, out of 680 impound, oh, out of it. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I, so, so, so like, you can use your medical plan to get Yeah, she of- asked me. She <laughs> said... Are you on unemployment or a Medi-Cal or anything like that? And I said, yeah, I'm on Medi-Cal. She goes, well, can I see your card? And I showed it to her. She said, okay, it's $100. And I said, what would it be without the, without that? She said, 685 You know something? They shouldn't even charge you for that. You know? They should. Yeah. You know, what, what? Oh, God. You know, when I grew up. It was a block on Pine you know, Street. I, that was, I, didn't even know. I was growing up in, in Marin <laughs> County and elsewhere, there wasn't a single parking meter anywhere. 
And then they hadn't developed sudden, them yet. All of a they sudden. have these <laughs> they have these streaks where after three p.m. on weekdays, if you don't move your car, they tow it, no matter what. Even if you paid your freaking meter. Wow. You know, you know the the worst uh, ticket I ever got was a two hundred dollar ticket in in uh, in Italy. Uh, 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 yeah, in Italy. And yeah, I, I had those in the. We just yeah, had one in the mail, and it was, and it was because. I went down I, I after three o'clock in the afternoon, something I went down became a one-way street. Mm. And I guess there was a sign, but it was in Italian, and I can't read Italian. <laughs> Italy makes a ton of money off of tickets. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, but we, I mean, we had three sent to us in the United States after coming back. Yeah, from that's Italy. exactly what happened to me. And I pay them because the next time you go in, they're going to get you. Well, no. It, it, the next time Plus you go, more. To, it, it will happen the next time yeah, I would go to Italy. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, right. And, 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 and I, I plan on going back. back so. And probably they'd throw me in jail and I'd have to pay like $1,000 or something. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's been live from so the I, Italian So I, I immediately paid it and said to hell with it, you know. Uh, and, yeah. and I'll never go back to Italy again. No, I'll well, go this, back to Italy. This thing in San Francisco is a racket. Well, a you know, racket. the uh, I had uh, I remember I was Park in the red I think zone, I was, right? I think I was no. I think I was telling the story the other day about how I was driving through Wyoming uh, a few years back, and all of a sudden I get a cop stops me and gives me a ticket, and I said he said it's a it's a like a th something like a three hundred dollar ticket. He said, but you don't have to show up to pay it. You can just simply mail it in, and here's all the information and so on and so forth. And I said, gee, that's terrible. He says, yeah, I'm sorry to tell you this, but this is a speed trap. And it, it really, <laughs> it's really exists only to make money for this town that we're mm -hmm. in. He was very honest about it. You know, there he said, towns in and Texas, he, like 90% of their income is, is speeding tickets. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so, so here's the funny thing. First of all, in California, speed traps are illegal, mm -hmm. and in California, you it, you would cite somebody with a California vehicle code law, speeding or red light violation or something like that. So the money goes to the state. Mm -hmm. The city gets five percent of the ticket back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which isn't much. Yeah, well, if if you can't have a speed trap though, um, how do they? If they need to slow people down, how do they manage to do it? You well, know? they get if you're on the freeway, you see the police, the highway patrol going around and across all lanes. If there's somebody speeding or something, they can use radar, you know, a radar gun, or they can. Most of the cars have certified. Yeah, but you're operators. but you're saying you can't have speed traps, and and a city can say, well, we're not a speed trap. We're just trying to keep people from speeding through our lovely little town. Give tickets, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I mean, how do you how do you say uh, speed traps are against the law? I mean, well, California you, speed trap to, in California means like you're hiding, you're in a police car and you're hiding behind a billboard. Or I something mean, you like have that. to prove their intent. You know. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Well. But anyway, what I was saying earlier about M Medicare is they just don't. The government doesn't really care about you. This idea that you pay 80 percent and there's 20 percent that somehow you have to take care of elsewhere all right so for 80 percent i pay something like 150 dollars out of my social security all right for the other 20 percent i pay 320 340 dollars yeah. well that's a what, private what's, what's wrong with this picture you know no it's a private company the reason you don't pay more than 180 is because the whole fucking country, I'm sorry, the whole country pays into Medicare. Well, it is the fucking country. Yeah, between Charlie and me, we just got you demonetized. <laughs> you know, I, I was I was watching, there's a great documentary that was done by Judd Apatow. It's four hours long on George Carlin. It's on, uh, mm. on Max, if you have it. And I got to tell you, Carlin, when he finally went into his HBO stuff, when I really caught up with him and liked his work, said something. He became more of a philosopher than anything else, <laughs> you know. And and what a lot of one of the things he brings up is, you know, 
they will take care of you as a, a they will take care of you when you are only an embryo the Republic, yep. you know the the, the yep. government they'll take care of you as an embryo but the but the minute you want uh, an abortion you can't have it you've got a that, that embryo is sacred right and then you, they take care of the embryo mm -hmm. like it was grim death okay and then the minute the embryo comes into this world you're on your own kid and he said and then they don't pay any attention to you until you're 18 years old and then they decide to draft you and kill you <laughs> and that's that's how much they have a, a be, believe in the right to life you know yep. they'll only protect you when you're in the womb and then towards the other end they'll draft you into the army and get you killed so that's the government i, I you know i just i, I don't know I, it, it's just i've never been happy with it and i don't think any of you have either because it's hypocritical it's hypocritical all the way around so uh josh no how are things in your neck of the woods where that term ever come from your neck of the woods <laughs> yeah they're uh, not too bad i suppose oh okay well i just was trying to you? trying to strike up a conversation <laughs> here and you uh, you know. <laughs> your mayor continually is getting himself in deeper oh, trouble. Oh, our mayor. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm glad because I don't like him. You know. Yeah, he's like, yeah, he's not a. Now, if we can only get the governor too, you know, I hate the governor. Yeah, not a fan. Yeah. I see. Uh, little weirdo got expelled from Congress. That's yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I. I. But how do you feel about that? You know, I mean, there's part of me that goes, hey, look, these people out in uh, Long Island elected this guy. So yeah. they got what they deserved. Um, you they know, really they, didn't elect him because they didn't know who he was. Well, you know, they, lied about you know, it. You know, then start doing your due diligence, you know? Start looking into the guy you're voting for. But if nobody did well, it, if they just believed him at face value, yeah. uh, but all I'm saying is, for whatever reason, they voted him in. They should have to suffer with him for the for two years, and then vote him out. And they should be the um, ones yeah, to get I mean, rid of him. Fair enough. It, but you know, it it hurts the country having someone in there of such status. Josh, and, Josh, it hurts well, the country. Look at the people who are in Congress right now, well, and how, what, what I mean, they're all about. It, he couldn't hurt it any worse than some of those many. guys are. Huh? You know, or at least several, but you know it. It's it's not good. So, and you know, uh, I think the last round, you know, there were a lot that didn't want to vote for it because they didn't have the ethics report and all that. And there yeah. were still some who claimed they were against it on constitutional grounds and all this other nonsense, which is fine. Well, uh, what's but, his name? Know, Gates. Gates got up and said he wasn't going to vote against him because yeah. he, and not because he believed in him, but just felt that. It set a, pre a bad precedent for Congress, and that you know, let's face it, the year the guy's going to be out anyway. Well, you, you know? know, but that's that's a, a year, you know. And I mean, what bad precedent what, does it what set? The, that, what damage that we kick people out of a the most prestigious legislative body in the world when they're a known Wait, jerk no, off and again, criminal? Again, <laughs> again, you use the word prestigious in con yeah. in con in context with our Congress. Prestigious, well, I mean, our I, Congress? Are you kidding me? There's no doubt they're on a bit of a, you know, clown show streak. But, <laughs> you know, I, like I mean, it still that. is what it is. Yeah, well. You know, it's meant to be. It's still, you know, the world's leading democracy and, and, and world power. And there are less than 600 people in a nation of 300 and, you know, 75 million that that get to do that and you know there's no constitutional requirement that he has to be convicted of a crime it's at their own discretion so it's it's not as if you know of all the offenses that that congress has committed in the last five to six years that would just have james madison sitting upright and bursting through his tombstone i think that one would be pretty low on the list you know i mean <laughs> So yeah, well, uh, I mean, it would be pretty well, but, but, but you know, I mean, it, come on, you know, the, yeah, this guy was a crook, no. okay, a crook. I mean, yeah. he was, he was, 
in a way, he's a pathetic soul because he's obviously a uh, a liar, a person who lies all the time, a pathological liar, if you will. Yeah. Uh, but you know, it it's kind of like you know what he's all about. It's like it, there's no there's no uh, hiding what he is. Yeah. At least he's in Congress, and you know who he is, so you don't do business with him in Congress. You kind of put him all over in the corner and uh, act and have him act like an elf on a shelf and, and just not participate in everything. And then when the time's over with, yes, Jeff, Jeff's going to well, know. Well, you know, with, with uh, having some business experience, you've got people who you hire, you know, and they do their job, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden... They don't do their job at all. So yeah, there's, just, there's a difference. Do? There's a difference here, though. I mean, we have a lot of guys in Congress who do not do their job. Well, okay. that's that's all right, but and they, we don't they know don't how many of them don't. Everything. We don't know how many of them don't use their uh, their money that they got from their minions uh, to get you know only fans. We we don't know that. We don't know that some of them don't go to Sephora. You know, but. This guy did, and they made, everything that he did, they went after him on, and they should have, and he was terrible and an ugly, horrible person. And then he, the worst part was he tried to say he was Jewish. That really bothered me, okay? You know. Um, but nevertheless, the question still remains. It, there have only been, like, five people, is it, uh, Josh, who have ever been thrown out by Congress? Now he's the sixth. And three um, of them listen. were because they were in the Confederate Army. Yeah. yeah and, and two of them were for, you know, malfeasance. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, before the show, I watched 30 minutes of CNN, mm -hmm. and I was just looking at their website, and there's no mention of Santos being thrown out. It's all about Trump. Well, mm -hmm. uh, I, I do know that I, I was I watching MSNBC, news. and that was... That was it. Thank God for MSNBC today that uh, Sandra Day O'Connor died, because they could spend at least 50, uh, twenty minutes on that each hour. You know. Well, yeah. I mean, that's what I was going to mention. Was you know, I think that. But this thing they were doing like crazy. Yeah, I don't care too much about the Santos. I mean, don't get me wrong. Yeah. The world hasn't been changed or anything. I, I mean, it. It. You know, it's. Right. I just think it's appropriate. A punishment for uh, his actions, but you know, really like these folks or dislike these fo folks, mm -hmm. you know, I think that Sandra Day O'Connor and Henry Kissinger, you know, both were certainly giants of their era, mm -hmm. you know, like yeah. I said, yeah. I'm sure each of them have some things that could be contra or are controversial and you know might rub certain people the wrong way fair enough and when you you know write the history of a person's life and legacy those things are all you know fair for the for the discussion but you know they were they were you well know, kissinger you put Kiss rosalind carter in there if you want i mean you well, know they they were kissinger yeah yeah but they, uh, kissinger uh will i think be remembered in history for quite a long time for the things he did for opening up China to to the to the west and and bringing them embracing them and getting them to become uh, well we capitalists you know i mean uh, he he did he did a lot of things which i won't say are necessarily good right. but they were significant and she had a lot of significant uh, decisions, and that she actually led the court into. She was a you know she would rally for something and then bring them in. And by the way, she was a moderate, but she was she was a Republican. Yeah. We forget that. Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. Some people do. I mean, I'll, I, I'll tell you. I, you know. I'm you know sure. who on the Supreme Court I'm really pissed at. Former person on the Supreme Court. To hell with Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Okay. And I will say that because if this woman had done what I believe, who asked her? Obama asked her to, re to, to resign so that he could turn around and appoint another left-leaning person onto the court. Uh, because when she, she did, but she wanted to stay there till she died. So she stayed there till she died. Trump was president. He appointed another uh, um, uh, conservative. 
and the whole you know Supreme Court got tipped. Uh, uh, I I think she was. Everybody went. Oh, we love Ruth Bader Ginsburg, but I think she really. If if we lost Roe versus Wade, it's because of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. You know. So we didn't know who was going to be in the White House when she died. What we didn't know who was going to be in the White House. He was in when the White died? House. He huh? was in the White That's House. Sad, sexist. <laughs> Get a little feedback in the house. Yeah. Okay. So, um, you said you said Obama asked her to re resign. Yeah, he did. Yes. He was did. he in office when he, he was in office he, when he, he asked yes, her? When he asked yeah. her, and she died under Trump. And she yeah, died. but she right. had she, she had cancer she, while Obama was president. She oh. had she had uh, t pancreatic cancer, so she was cancer for like twenty years. But what are you what, what are you saying, Pam? I'm saying I'm surprised you're making this comment. I think it's a little sexist because no yep. one ever saying that a man should pull out early. Oh, oh, oh yeah. on there. Well, you know I've I mean? had women ask me to pull out early, so I, uh, I have yeah. a poor choice of words. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not sexist because I, 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 you know, if it were a man, I'm just saying that she she stayed in office too long. No, and, and, and got to a point where Trump could appoint a, a person to replace her. Well, she could she could have she could have retired right before the election, and um, and, and Obama could have replaced. could have appointed somebody. The problem yeah. is yeah. the Republicans controlled the Senate, and they sat on when when Scalia died. They sat on that for ten months without a, without a poll approving. They never would have approved anybody if if, if, if uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg had resigned. They never would have approved one. Yeah, but, I don't care if she resigned the first year of Obama's presidency. Yeah. Well, they would yeah. never have approved her. Yeah. Well, speaking yeah. about that, uh, you know what happens now to Santos's seat? Uh, yeah, special election, yeah. And I don't know if it's going to be a special election. I I heard today the the uh, governor could appoint. No, you cannot appoint a representative. Really? They have to represent it, the people. It, they have to be elected. Is that yeah. is that uh, yes. cor correct, yeah. Josh? Jeff, could you move over a little bit so Pam can sit with you? <laughs> yeah, she's, 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 she's busy putting on my chair. I like, I like right the now. way, Look, I like the what way she's doing. I like the way she thinks. Put lights on my trees, guys. Sorry. Like wait, a minute, think, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. What? You're you're, Jew you're Jewish and you have a Christmas oh, tree. It's a Hanukkah bush. <laughs> oh, you, uh, going to Jewish hell. Wait, wait a minute. Is, she, is Pamela Jewish? No. no. Oh well, I'm then she can have a tree. Then she can have a tree. Okay. Thank you. You marry you married a goyim. Huh? A a oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Hey, what was it? The thing about Ruth Bader Ginsburg is that she had terminal cancer. And she, there wasn't much time left. I hate saying this. No, but actually, she survived. She survived. No, what? no, near the end of Obama's presidency. I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah wait, but wait, she lived for almost four years after that. Yeah, oh, she didn't yeah. die until yeah. two weeks before the election. Yeah, in fact, did, everybody. No, I, I'm just. But, but but what I'm saying is, is she could have left a few months earlier before she died. I mean, that was the whole. She uh, was really, really, yeah. really sick. Well, she, no, she had pancreatic cancer, but uh, yeah. everybody was amazed at how long she had it. Yeah, she lasted yeah, because it got years. caught early. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. She would have had to retire in 2016 in order for Obama to replace her. Right. She didn't die until 2020. Oh, I see. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, you know, and it would I get it. And, yeah, and then then he could have had somebody in there, and that court would not have been loaded when it was but when, she had the right as a u.s supreme court justice to stay there oh absolutely i'm not saying i'm not saying she, she should have i'm, I, just, I'm, I'm saying just that for the good of the country the good of the party the good of 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 all the laws in our country it would have been good of her to do it at that time so that obama could then appoint someone to the uh, but, but we thought hillary was going to get the, the no, no, it, uh, forget that. about that you know what what he was thinking was you're not well, you're old, you know, if you leave now, I can then appoint a new Supreme Court justice. And then the Republicans would ignore that. Well, no, no, because, you know, it was a little earlier than that. You know, it, it, I remember what they did with, uh, what's his name? The guy who's now the head of the uh, Justice yeah. Department. Um, 
you know, but I mean, it, it but I, I, it's just, you know, uh, well, anyway, so. Hmm. Well, the fact of, uh, uh, of O'Connell, Mitch O'Connell, what's his name? Hey, the, the, Mitch he McCon- said that they would not, if Hillary won, they would go the whole four years without without appointing a justice. He said that before the election in 2016. Well, you know, I just think, you know, what kind of, uh, what kind of person is it who is given that very important job of doing the people's work, who then threatens that kind of thing? I mean, it just seems like that, that should, I don't know, you can't make a law against it, but there should be some rules against it that in cases like that, they can't sit there and, what's the, uh, is it filibustering? I don't know, but whatever, prevent it's a vote for filibustering. He just don't, won't bring up the nomination. That's right. He's the, he's the head of the Senate. Well, you know what's great about right. He decides yeah. what comes before the Senate. He knew he could postpone it because the election was... So do you think these idiots out in Long Island are going to put in another conservative? Or do you think they finally say, you know, we, we, that didn't work out too well. <laughs> you know, and if a good moderate is running, they'll vote for him? Or do you think we're stuck well, with... sure they're expected to <clears throat> be, you know, kind of a close 50 50 which it was last time i believe i don't really think that he santos didn't win by a, by you know, a no, by a very large margin uh, i mean he won but you know not not by a, a large margin so I, i'm sure it's be competitive i don't know how the, the well biden won that field. that district by like 16 points oh did he really yeah, yeah, but that's, that's a whole. Di- I don't, did he win that district? That, that district, yeah. District? Hmm. That they crossed lines to vote for Santos against. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't really remember. I, I didn't think it was by that much. You know, maybe it was. You know, if I'm wrong. Well, um, in New York is a very liberal state, but you get outside of New York City, and there are some yeah, areas that are. Long Island, it's more conservative. It's, really, it's more. It's more conservative, <laughs> but not as much as if you go to upstate New York. Well, you go into some communities, you know, and if you have anything but a Trump bumper sticker, they boo you out of town, you know. Mm. Uh, But New York City is so huge and so large and is so liberal, you know, that pretty much this state can always be counted on to vote for the Democrat. Mm. Yes, yes, Ray. Uh, So Santos comes from Long Island? Yeah. Yeah. So I I find it really interesting that he tells all these lies over stupid, meaningless things that really don't matter. Mm -hmm. And then yet when Trump lies about stuff that's really important, which we all know (laughs) he's done thousands of times, they make excuses for him and uh, and say that he's not lying. Well, I, I think the only thing Trump ever said that was very real and very right, and we all joked about it, is that he could kill somebody in the middle of Fifth yeah. Avenue and and get away with it. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly believe he could right now. Oh, I agree. He could. These people are cults. They're, they're cult members. They, they I, I mean, they're having, they're having to stall everything with him, you know? Um, and they're all questioning what's going to happen, and, and maybe Josh can uh, attack this question, mm-hmm. uh, uh, tend to this question, uh, is when he, if he becomes president, and they haven't had these trials yet, can he prevent them from happening? Well, yeah, I don't think he can prevent them, though. He doesn't have any power to. Yeah, but do you, but do you, do you, certainly not the state trial. He's going to use the ones he could with the just the justice system work will work for him. Couldn't he just stop the trials? Doesn't have. I mean, no, he doesn't. I have mean, could he? Could he? Did. Yeah, but could he get the? Could he fire the head of the justice department, put in his own person, and have yeah. them drop the case? I thought so. I mean, sure he can. You can ask. <laughs> Make sure you uh, how, okay. Let's say let's say case. let's say he did that. Okay, or attempted to do that. Do you think the American public would yell and scream about that? I would hope. I would you imagine. would hope, but do you think they will? That's the question. I think a decent amount of people would. Yes. Hmm. Okay. Well, we can't do it with the state ones for sure. Hmm. Mm. 
I don't think. No, he can't. Well, he George, can't. the one in Georgia, he can't do anything about. And of and course, he can't the civil, do ones in New York either. The, well, the civil case. And then case if there's one in Arizona, he can't do that if that happens. Yeah, yeah but in in uh, in uh, well in the New I'm York case, court. New York case is wonderful. I love the New York case because <laughs> no, because what it did is it showed the public that the emperor has no clothes. Mm -hmm. You know that he's been saying what a billionaire he is all these years, and he's been lying through his teeth. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know. It hit him right in his identity. Well, that, it hit him where it hurt him the most. Yeah. Because his only business was saying to somebody, oh, very nice building you're putting up there. You want to name it after me? Pay me a million dollars. And then they would slap <laughs> the Trump name on the building. Now they're chiseling them off, you know. Yeah. But uh, the fact was his main business was the Trump name. He's even said it in some of these cases. The case in New York, they said, well, the Trump name is worth something. It's worth many billions of dollars. And that's what we're selling is the Trump name. Uh, and and that, that, that business is gone. He can't do that now. You know, uh, I know people that moved into a building here in New York. It was a Trump apartment building. It said Trump on the outside. They sued to get that name removed. Because they felt, since these were condos, that the worth of their apartment was diminished by his name being on the yep. building. And they made I their case, they and they, re they forced it off, you know. So. Yep. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But anyway, what a crazy time we live in. I keep saying that, you know. Extraordinary times. Um, well, it's only because you have Trump derangement syndrome. If you didn't have that, everything would be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Uh, yes, Alan. Interesting times. Hamas goes into Israel yesterday. Two brothers jump out of their car and kill three people at a, at a uh, bus stop. They get back in their car, and one military person and somebody with a concealed weapon permit killed them both. Yep. Instant justice. You know, after all the trouble that Hamas is having on the West Bank, they would allow some of their people to go into Israel and kill people at a bus stop. Well, I mean, uh, you know something? I'm I'm wondering, and I and this is not taking pity on Hamas. Don't take it at that. No. But I wonder how much control Hamas has over some of these people. I mean, if somebody, if if let's say two guys go into Israel, decide they're going to shoot up people at a bus stop, and then they get killed. What's Israel going to claim? Oh, they're Hamas. Well, they might not be Hamas, or they might be one of the fringe groups, because I think there's a certain element of this that Hamas can't control. You know, a lot of those, some of those hostages are not being held by Hamas. Right. They're being held by any of these, many of these other fringe groups. And Hamas can say, okay, well, we took good care of these people. We had a, we were, we were good about it. All right. We sold them. Yeah. Yeah, but they they gave them to other people too, and we don't know how well those people took care of them. So we that's why these people in 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 Israel are suffering, and I think it was too early to stop uh, the uh, uh, you know the idea of a of a temporary truce until we got as many people out of there as we possibly could. I think the well, hostages are a prime concern, you know. Netanyahu said, release everybody and we'll stop the fight and we'll go to negotiating. But Hamas did, did he? Did he? I didn't hear him say that. No, me either. It was in the news uh, three, four weeks ago. <laughs> three or four weeks ago, this thing had just barely started. Okay. Yeah. So. No, I, I never heard anything of the sort. Okay. You know, all I've heard out of Netanyahu is that he's kept quiet for a while because everybody was coming down on Israel for the way they were killing people in Gaza, and he came to some kind of accommodation where he got some of the people out. But I don't think he wanted to stop that fighting. I think mm -hmm. he wanted to just decimate that whole country. Yeah, he did. You know. He never, he never said anything I mean, about the, the hostages the whole time they were bombing everything out of it. Well, my concern, see, my first concern, let's say I was the head of Israel, okay? My first concern would be the hostages. Yeah. And I don't know that bombing is necessarily going to help the hostages because I might be bombing places where there are hostages. 
I don't know where they are. You know, it's um, pretty. It's pretty rare that hostages get released in in, in things like this. Well, mostly. if it's very it's rare, good. this is a very rare exception. And, yeah, I agree. and Hamas so far has been pretty good about it. And you have to admit that while it's got to have been a terrifying situation, most of those people coming out of there look like they're pretty damn healthy. Yeah, we'll see. What do you mean we'll also, see? Also, they, well, they, you know, the, what's the what's the thing that uh, not called the Helsinki syndrome? The uh, I can't. Uh, there's a syndrome where they yeah, Stockholm Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Stockholm syndrome. Well, Thank that, you. That, that has to. That's that, when you join the bad guys. Yeah, but now yeah. that you're loose, you're not part of the bad guy. Here's the thing. Uh, no, here, it's here, not here, a matter of joining. Well, it's here, a matter here, of here, mental. Here, here, here's uh, that's mental. what I meant. I mean, you mentally get brainwashed and right. you. Yeah, yeah but right. forget so about that. I'm like talking. I'm, I'm talking about how they look. They looked healthy. They didn't look as though they'd been beaten. De- or anything. You know, yeah. and okay. they were de- they were that. they were deprived of food, and they were de- they, but it wasn't held back on purpose. I don't think. I don't think anybody in Gaza had food. You know, so I mean, but the point was that uh, I think that. Uh, um, uh, you you want to get the hostages out, and you, you don't want to start bombing places where you think the hostages might be. You know, they might have already killed some hostages. Well, I'm some sure hostages may have died already from bombs. From the bombs. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. So I mean, and we don't know. You know, we don't know those other groups. They may be more wild than Hamas is. Hamas at least has some political structure. These side groups don't have any. Yep. You know. And that's if I I'm I'm worried for the people who are being held by those people, who pro- I mean, it, it, did you see the footage of the, the uh, Hamas showing up at the hospital, with a guy with a big wound in his chest, on a no. stretcher? Yeah, and they, yeah, they it, uh, and and Israel tried to portray this as uh, oh look see they do their headquarters are in that hospital. No, what they did is they had somebody who was terribly wounded. And they took him to the hospital. They don't know if he was Israeli or not. I they don't. I don't know if he was necessarily, but he was one of the hostages. Okay. You know, and so uh, you know, you, Hamas worked on one level because they've they've been a political leader in that part of the mm-hmm. world, and then they've got to also keep these other side groups in tow. So you don't know, you know, what's a renegade group and what isn't a renegade group. And it's, it's again, mm-hmm. what I call, and the term has been made many times, and I agree with it, the fog of war. Everything gets hazy. There mm-hmm. is no truth. You can't believe anything in that kind of fog of war. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yes, Ray? What it's so confusing to me is they, if... I'm assuming it was Hamas who carried out these October 7th yeah, which were massive horrend- killings. Horrendous, and, horrendous, horrendous. Yes. Yeah. And then something happens, and then maybe it's just getting, you're, you're getting the shit bombed out of you, but then you turn around and you like turn in hostages that are treated well. I, I don't understand how both of those things can happen at the same time. The one it's, thing that looked, I find it yeah. so odd. The one thing that looked very strange to me, I don't know if any of you saw it, there was this one woman who was, you know, who was kidnapped as a hostage. And she was released. And apparently when she was, she was, I think, one of the women that was at the uh, the rock festival. And she had these, and I saw them. She was walking, when she was let go, she ran to the arms of whoever. She had on these incredible designer shoes. Okay, now, I don't blame her for having designer shoes. I'm just amazed that she was kidnapped, held hostage, and those designer shoes looked in great condition. Yeah. I, was, I was just amazed by it. I would have thought that's she the would've... kind of thing that just blows my mind. I don't understand what there's. So, there's something we're not under, that we're yeah, not what, getting what here. We're, I think what we're missing here is Hamas is releasing the people that look healthy. Yeah. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sure the people, the people that are not doing well, Hamas is not releasing them. Uh, they, oh, you think for propaganda purposes? Well, they have let mm-hmm. a couple. Absolutely. They have let a couple of people out who were ill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, I would I say you you, you get 250 on. some odd people, and how many of them are going to wind up being healthy? 
th throughout this entire experience. I mean, there, there's an old lady they let go who had medical problems. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but how many people in there have medical problems? There's a guy in there who had his hand blown off, and he hasn't been returned yet. Is he alive? Is he? Yeah. Is he alive? Is he dead? You know. You're right. I mean, they're gonna they're gonna let go of the the healthiest people first. That's right for propaganda reasons. Yeah. So they they could be uh, mistreating or torturing the other ones, and yeah. and then just releasing these and making it look like they're the good guys. Well, I think if, if the mistreatment you get sympathy from the world, yeah. I guess. I, yeah, I think uh, Hamas, though, as terrible as they are, are very sophisticated in PR. And uh, mm -hmm. I think they realized that they, they had to treat these hostages like they were gold so that they would be able to get, get them back home eventually looking healthy, all right? But they, can't, but they gave away a, a certain number of these people. I think maybe 100, is it estimated, maybe to other groups? And they can have no control over those groups. And that's mm. the problem there. They, they couldn't send back a lot of people because they don't have them. So it's, <laughs> you know, but it's all fog of war stuff. And please don't think that I'm defending Hamas because I'm not, okay? Uh, there's no way you can defend Hamas. It would be idiotic of you to defend Hamas and for their actions. But you've also got to, uh, you know, I think... Uh, go after uh, Israel as well for the decimation of 10,000 people. Uh, it's just 14, overkill. Yeah. It's overkill. And 75% of the population has been displaced, at least. Has been displaced. That's the other at fact. At least 70. That's incredible. And, you know, I mean, certainly um, these kids are going to grow up and not be mm -hmm. any friends of Israel. You can bet your life on that. And what about the trauma these, they've gone through? Yeah. Children. Well, wow. there are about four thousand children that were killed. Yeah. So imagine how many survived. Yeah. yeah. Injured and traumatized, and oh my God. They, they already showed in the news a couple of kids trying to throw a they lit lit a fuse and throwing at the military guys, and the military guys took action immediately, not even waiting to see what would happen with it, and shot and killed both the kids. Really. Was on the news yesterday. Well, I, I didn't wow. I didn't see that either, but I'll I'll <laughs> have to. Well, I don't know. Wait, in. you know, if, if the, whatever it is that they're throwing at you, maybe a gas grenade or something to joke around. You kill these kids. It wasn't close to you. Let it go off. Take <laughs> up or let it go off. I mean, if it ends up being something that could harm you, and they throw another one, that you know, then stop them. But yeah, I think they're a little trigger happy. Well, I think the the whole both countries are trigger happy. Come on, yeah, both of them. So. You know, yeah. and somebody's got to get in there and and just say everybody, cool it, calm well, down. I'm sure those Israeli troops are are terrified too. I mean, could you imagine just being a grunt walking in there? Oh my God! Well, imagine what it just people on both sides. Well, the people it's that just, are going door to door, just, it, and nobody's right. nobody's getting in the middle and saying, "Kids, knock it off." You know, yeah. let's just calm down. Let's get this thing solved. Let's give these people uh, uh, a two-state solution like they've been asking for for a long time. And let's m make sure that the best way to keep Israel safe is by inclusion of the Palestinians into the world. I, can, I think they ought to take the governor of Texas and take, let him control the Palestinian people after uh, this is uh, over with. Perfect job for him and his I, I can't figure that joke out, but I'll figure it out later. You maybe can diagram it for me and send it to okay, me. Okay, no man. problem. It wasn't meant <laughs> to any, be any, Anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time here. Uh, Jeff, thank you for joining us this thank evening. You. We appreciate it. Josh, we didn't get too terribly political tonight, but you've been helpful on Supreme Court stuff, and I really appreciate your participation on, uh, on Friday nights. Uh, thanks to, of course, uh, Charlie... And thanks to our good friend, uh, Alan. And Ray, it's great to see you here tonight. Thank you. And everybody should give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you as uh, we say goodnight to them. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's the Citizen Panel. There'll be another one next on uh, the uh, Jack Bishop Show called The Intersection. And what he'll be doing is uh, taking your calls on Skype at GabNet Live. Skype cabinet live i'll see you again uh, monday on the pop-up show which will be on facebook 
And then we'll see you again on Wednesday night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.